Welcome back. In this video, we're going to verify trig identities. Our objectives here are to review the guidelines for verifying trig identities. We'll give some sample problems, and then we'll verify trig identities using our graphing calculator. We'll start with some guidelines. First thing we want to do is work with one side of the equation at a time. And as a rule of thumb, we recommend that you begin with the more complicated side. Look for opportunities to factor, to add and subtract fractions, to square a binomial, or to create a monomial denominator. Third, you want to look for opportunities to use the fundamental identities. So maybe by taking a peek at your final goal, what you have on one side. You want to rewrite it in first maybe in sines and cosines, secants and tangents, and cosecants and cotangents. So look at those particular functions. If all else fails, try converting to sines and cosines. In the end, sometimes you'll hit roadblocks, but try something. Attempts that lead to dead ends always provide a little bit of insight. So let's take a look at some samples. Our first sample here, sine squared theta equals secant squared theta minus one all over secant squared theta. Our right hand side here is a little bit more complicated, so we'll leave the left hand side alone and we'll just carry that along with us. And we'll do some work here on the right hand side. So you may recognize that secant squared theta minus one using a Pythagorean identity is equal to tangent squared theta. So our numerator we can rewrite as tangent squared theta. Well, one over secant squared theta is equal to cosine squared theta. That is actually good news for us that we've got secant squared theta in the denominator. So we've rewritten secant squared theta minus one as tangent squared theta and rewritten secant squared theta as cosine squared theta, although that secant squared theta was in the denominator, now I've got cosine squared theta in the numerator. Our goal here though is to get sine squared theta. Well tangent, we can rewrite that as sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. And multiplying by cosine squared theta, we see that we've got cosine squared theta in both the numerator and the denominator, so they cancel. So my right hand side does simplify to sine squared theta, and my left hand side is sine squared theta, so that one checks out. Sample two, we have two secant squared alpha equals one over one minus sine alpha plus one over one plus sine alpha. So definitely the right hand side is more complicated. It looks like our denominators here are conjugates. So let's take a look at that. Uh, we need a common denominator if we want to add these. So if I multiply both sides to get a common denominator, so if I multiply the left hand side here by one plus sine alpha over one plus sine alpha, and I multiply this fraction by one minus sine alpha over one minus sine alpha. My denominator, my common denominator, foiling my denominator, I get one minus sine squared alpha, because those are conjugates. My numerator, I have one plus sine alpha plus one minus sine alpha. My sine alphas simplify to zero. They drop out and I'm left with one plus one in my numerator, which is two. So I have two all over one minus 
sine squared alpha. Well, if I recognize my Pythagorean identity here in the denominator, 1 minus sine squared alpha is cosine squared alpha. So I can rewrite that as 2 over cosine squared alpha. Looking at, at that a little bit more closely, the reciprocal of cosine squared alpha is secant. So sure enough, I end up with 2 times secant squared alpha, right? 1 over cosine squared alpha equals secant squared alpha. So that does indeed check out. In sample 3, this is a sample in which we will convert to sines and cosines. So I have secant x cosecant x plus tangent of x plus cotangent x. Looks like the right-hand side is a little bit more complicated, so we'll try and get the right-hand side to look like the left-hand side. So tangent, we'll rewrite that as sine x over cosine x, and cotangent, we'll rewrite that as cosine x over sine x. We want to get a common denominator if we want to add these fractions. So I will go ahead and multiply the left hand side here by sine x over sine x. And I will multiply the right hand side by cosine x over cosine x. Getting my common denominator, I have sine squared x plus cosine squared x all over our common denominator cosine x times sine x. I really like the look of that numerator. It's our Pythagorean identity, so that simplifies to 1. So I'm left with 1 over sine x cosine x. And I can really, I can rewrite these. We'll rewrite it up here. We've got a little more space. So now I have 1 over sine x times 1 over cosine x. Well, 1 over sine x is cosecant x, and 1 over cosine x is secant x. So I have cosecant x times secant x, and that does indeed equal secant of x times cosecant x. So we have verified that identity. In sample 4, this is going to be an example in which we use conjugates. So I have secant x plus tangent of x equals cosine x over 1 minus sine x. We actually have done this kind of thing before. We're going to multiply our numerator and denominator by the conjugate of our denominator. So 1 plus sine of x, leaving with us with a numerator of cosine x times 1 plus sine x all over 1 minus sine squared x. 1 minus sine squared x though is cosine squared x. So I have cosine x times 1 plus sine of x. I have not distributed that cosine x and that's all over cosine squared x. Well, cosine x over cosine squared x, one of my cosines is going to cancel here. Right? It's no different than having, you know, y over y squared. Right? The, one of the y's cancels, so I'm left with 1 over y. Well, here I'm left with 1 over cosine. So I have 1 plus sine of x all over cosine x. Now my goal here is to get secant x plus tangent of x. Well, I've got sine over cosine here, which is tangent, um, but I need to split these between our two numerators, our two terms in the numerator. So if I rewrite that as 1 over cosine of x plus sine x over cosine x, it's apparent that the reciprocal here of cosine x is our secant of x. 
and sine x over cosine x is tangent of x. So that does indeed equal our left hand side and I have verified that trig identity. Objective three, we want to confirm these using the calculator. So I'm not going to rewrite this at all. I just want to confirm cosine of theta divided by one minus sine of theta equals secant of theta plus tangent of theta. Now I might need to make this a little bit more friendly for my calculator. Um, so secant of theta I might want to rewrite that as 1 over cosine of theta. But tangent of theta, that's calculator friendly. So this will be one function in my calculator. And the other function in my calculator will be cosine of theta divided by 1 minus sine of theta. And I'll use x in my, in my calculator. So it might look something like this when I put it in. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. So I couldn't use theta, I used x. So I've got cosine of x divided by 1 minus sine of x. There's my left-hand side. And my right-hand side, my secant, is 1 over cosine of x plus tangent of x. Be careful with your parentheses. You can see here my denominator cosine x. I protected that with parentheses uh, to make sure I graph this right. Do zoom. I'll do zoom trig. And there's my first one. And in red is my second one. So if you weren't looking, you might have missed it. But first graphed it as a blue function. And then the red came right over the top. So those two indeed are equivalent. That culminates this particular video, and we'll get some more practice with our trig identities when I see you in class.